and I am the Director of Advancement here at the Division of Continuing Education. I am also a graduate from the class of 2000 when I earned my ALB in the field of government and from the class of 13 uh, when I earned my ALM also in the field of government. Uh, now, I really thoroughly enjoyed every single minute of my time here at Harvard, and it was such a privilege to study under the world's most esteemed faculty and have the influence of my peers from all over the world with such a varied expertise. Uh, and it was just precious time. So here at the division now, I oversee global engagement programming that brings our community a lifetime of resources for uh, social, for professional, for uh, professional growth. This is why we are here and we are so happy to have you today. Now, over the last five years, I have met over a thousand people, 2000 people on my travels with former deans Leitner and Lambert, uh, meeting alumni and students and our various community members out there in the committee and bringing them together from for the very first time. Honestly, we went to 30 plus cities and all but one of those cities was the very first time that our community was able to meet to meet one another. Now, all of you understand, and our community is so intimately bonded by just how difficult it is to earn a Harvard degree, a credential, to take a course while working full time, while raising a family, while caring for parents or managing a volunteer activity. This is tough stuff. And I've met so many of you that also managed to do it in the middle of the night if you were far east or from, you know, in, or if you were in Europe, or the wee hours of the morning, you know, navigating a sleep schedule as well as a course schedule and a work schedule. Now, this is truly nothing short of exceptional. Now, you're joining us from all over the world today, and I know some of you are just popping on, but I thought it would be great fun to have a poll. Let's see where you're coming from. Let's throw up a poll. And I would ask that you select the area or region that represents your location. Take a minute and just make that selection. I think it's interesting that our students zoom into their classes from every single time zone. And our alumni actually live in over 100 countries around the world. So it looks like we have a very broad spread. That's so great to see. We'll give it just another few seconds as it looks like pretty much everyone has made their selection. That's great. And hello to all of you that are saying hello to, from in chat. It's nice to see you even virtually. Okay, we're getting there. Let's give it 10 more seconds. Ah, it's looking good. Great, great, great. All right. I think that's good. I say we close it. It looks like nearly everyone has made a selection at this point. And we can share those results so everyone can look. Very broad. It looks like we have great representation across the United States. Uh, hello to our friends in Europe and the Middle East and Africa, as far away as Africa. Amazing. Uh, in Australia and Asia. Good evening to you. Thank you all for that. We can take that down it looks great okay now our community <clears throat> is here to support you the harvard extension alumni association board of directors and over a hundred volunteers all over the world are working tirelessly to bring our community together and to extend harvard truly to cities all over the world through our regional chapters Three amazing alumni serve on the board of the Harvard Alumni Association as well, working with directors from all 12 Harvard schools to foster connection and to bring opportunities to all Harvard alumni. And the Alumni Association, as well as our colleagues from across the division, particularly the Office of Career Services with Linda Spencer and Shoshana Maybar, are working really hard to bring career resources and support for those of you looking to change careers or to find your next job or to land your dream job. Now, COVID-19 and the economic disruption as a result has really upped the urgency of the need for this support. 
Alumni are sharing job opportunities on a platform called Crimson Careers. They are signing up in droves to mentor students on a newly launched mentorship platform called First Hand Advisors. Our faculty and alumni are working together to create events that are rooted in the most pressing issues of the day and sharing insights into key industries and trends. So whether you're looking to make friends, to network, to learn or to give back, there are so many ways to do that. I invite you to join any of our virtual programs and hopefully in person future meetings just as soon as we are able. And volunteer. There are ways to volunteer to mentor students, as I mentioned, to plan events, to plan our wonderful reunion alumni weekend, to select our award winners, to start a chapter in your city, or if you're a student, become a global ambassador. Now, in spite of the unprecedented circumstances that we are facing today, the future of this division could not be more bright and surely will thrive under the leadership and the sheer passion of our new Dean, Nancy Coleman. Now, before joining Harvard, Nancy was the Associate Provost and Founding Director of Strategic Growth Initiatives at Wellesley College. She created Wellesley Extended, a unit of Wellesley College encompassing summer term professional and executive education. She also created the Contemporary Women's Leadership Institute, which was a global program designed to help undergraduates develop leadership skills and truly find their voice. Before joining Wellesley, Nancy was the Vice President at Key Path Education, which is a leading academic global service uh, company, and, and she, in, she oversaw instructional design for students and faculty. And she was a Director of Distance Education at Boston University. Now, Nancy is also the President of UPSIA, which is the University Professional Continuing Education Association. It is one of the largest continuing education organizations in the world. She's making history here at Harvard by becoming the first female dean of the Division of Continuing Ed and University Extension. So without further ado, it is truly my honor to present Dean Nancy Coleman. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. I really appreciate it. It's it's kind of odd to hear about yourself read like that, but um, but it is absolutely my pleasure to join you as Dean of the Division of Continuing Education, and I'm so thrilled to be with you today. I feel very privileged to participate in what I understand to be the largest Harvard Extended Virtual Gathering to date. The fact that many of you have taken time out of your busy schedules on a weekend, no less, to attend today's event is truly a testament to the type of community and how powerful it is here at Harvard's DCE. As we saw, there's six continents, 55 countries, and I think I counted 35 states represented on today's session. And Jill, maybe next time we can work on, we can work on getting that seventh continent involved. But until then, all kidding aside, it's a really impressive turnout. Thank you so much for your interest, both in DCE and in hearing about, uh, hearing about my deanship. And I really hope our program today is worthy of such a terrific showing. I just want to begin by saying, I really truly look forward to serving as your dean. This is an amazing place. And even in the short time I've been here, I've learned so much and I've been so impressed by everything that I've learned. The beginning of the academic year is always an exciting time for me, filled with new energy and excitement about our community and what's to come. And while this year we might not be together physically, I feel that we're very much together in spirit. I'd like to begin my remarks today with just a story about how I was welcomed into the Harvard community because I think it's really indicative of the experience that you all have as well. Back in June, when it was announced that I'd be Dean of DCE, they did a story on me in the Harvard Gazette about my appointment. And within 24 hours, at least 100 DCE community members, ranging from students, alum, faculty, and staff, reached out to me completely unsolicited in LinkedIn to show their support for my appointment and offer welcome. I see some familiar names in the participant box, so I know some of you are among those who did that. And I have to say, at the time, I was really amazed and frankly shocked at the outreach. But today, two months, give or take, into my deanship, I've come to understand that that is, that is Harvard. That's the community that's Harvard. And I'm so proud and humbled to be among you today. 
I joined Harvard's Division of Continuing Education at an unprecedented time in its history. Not only are we in the middle of a global public health crisis, but it seems like this threats in every direction, from our fight for racial justice, escalating violence and peaceful protests, insecurities about the integrity of our democracy, and unease about our economic future. Personally, I've had to meet my team and forge relationships at a distance and learn about Harvard's extremely complex ecosystem through indirect means. I haven't had the pleasure of walking through the yard or enjoying the view under these magnificent gates. My Zoom background today is just gonna have to do for the time being. It, it truly takes a village to support the work of DCE and I've committed to meet every one of our team members face to face, well, over Zoom, in the next couple of months. As of yesterday, I've met with 120 of our team members, just over one third of our staff. I look forward to speaking with students and with alums and, and with your community. I've met with Harvard's president and provost, my fellow deans, and countless other leaders across Harvard. The theme has been clear. DCE is a special place, but you all know that because it's you that makes it special. The Division of Continuing Education is comprised of four academic units, Summer School, Harvard Institute for Learning and Retirement, Professional Development Programs, and of course the Harvard Extension School, one of 12 degree granting schools of Harvard University. There are learners representing all four of these areas on today's session. And our goal, as many of you know, is to extend Harvard's educational resources to learners at many life phases. Our student groups might be markedly different in demographics, geography, ethnicity, and more. But despite that, the thing that truly binds us together is community. Each of you has experienced what it means to further your education as an adult, and that endeavor is hard. As Jill said, it's difficult to balance family, work, child care, elder care, health priorities, and school at the same time. The drive, ambition, and dedication that it takes to participate in rigorous Harvard classes, and even more to earn a degree, is a major achievement, and that's the thing that unites us. The Harvard DCE experience is life-changing and transformative, and I'm proud of each one of you. Despite the difficulties we now face, I truly view this as a time of inspiration and opportunity, and even of innovation. I know this sounds counterintuitive to our current experience, and it might not be the way many members of our community are currently feeling. However, I encourage you to reframe the way in which we see our environment, because the one thing that won't change is our commitment to and love of learning and this community. Ask yourself, what important lessons can we take away from these times, and how can we adapt to a future that's uncertain yet sure to change? Knowing this community, it's probably already a course in development about this very topic. If not, that's an opportunity. Since my arrival, the inspiring stories I've heard from faculty, staff, students, and alumni alike have been nothing short of amazing, and we celebrate you for them. Students or alumni are the backbone of our community, and I urge you to draw from this community during these challenging times. Jill noted some of the resources that are available, but I really wanna emphasize that you are part of a global Harvard ecosystem that is comprised of thoughtful, driven, and fearless leaders and advocates. The experience of Harvard unites all of us who have ever studied or worked at the university, and this essence truly reaches across time, place, and geography. This year, I'm so proud to join your ranks. My career in education has spanned both corporate and higher ed. I myself am a first-generation learner, non-traditional and lifelong. So it's not a stretch to say that you may someday see me sitting beside you in one of our Harvard courses. For me, the opportunity to lead DCE is, is truly an incredible privilege and one that I'm still checking myself to make sure it's real. I'm really thrilled to be here. In fact, I really view it as the capstone of my career. In each of my roles to date, I've managed components of what I'm calling the DCE universe. I've worked and taught I've worked with and taught undergraduate students, graduate students, pre-college students, and corporate learners. I've led distance learning initiatives, the global operations of an online services company, and even a golf course, where I started a successful golf education program for women and juniors. Learning is truly in my blood, 
and I'm really passionate about the doors that education opens for students from all walks of life and really equally passionate about how we can keep opening them for others. I was first introduced to online learning in 2004 when I joined the distance education office at another Boston University. Frankly, I was a skeptic, but quickly came to realize the incredible learning outcomes and transformative nature of distance education. I've watched students from around the globe forge deep rooted relationships online as they learned and grew together, just like you have done. My focus at the time was on creating the absolute best student experience possible and on developing services and support specifically for adult students. However, I have to say that the two proudest moments of my life came when I walked across the stage to receive my master's degree and nine years later accept my doctoral degree. I earned both of those honors as an adult, part-time, working professional. I understand your struggles, your late nights, your will to persist, and your joy in completion because I've been there too. At DCE, we've embraced a commitment to lifelong learning. Our learnings and our offerings extend the resources of Harvard to a broader community, one that contains a growing and evolving population locally, nationally, and globally. Under the unifying concept of a 60-year curriculum, we believe that DCE can be a place where learners can flourish educationally no matter their need or stage in life. Each of our educational units is in and of itself a critical component in that landscape. Let me illustrate exactly what I mean by that. So hopefully you can all see a graphic of what we view as the Harvard Division of Continuing Education 60-year curriculum landscape. And what this illustrates is all of the components that make up what I call the DCE universe. I love this graphic because it really illustrates how there's something at DCE for everybody, no matter what your age or lifestyle, like, I'm sorry, life experience. If you look across the bottom, you'll see a graph. And what we hope is that, and what we know is that students join us as pre-college students, as early as 16 or 17 years old, and spend a transformative summer with us, living in Harvard residence and studying from our faculty. A little bit later on, when they become undergraduates or adult learners, they can join us in Harvard Summer School and take four credit classes, both for enrichment and academic credit. Later in life, when they enter what we call the career and work phase, which occurs about five years post high school in our vocabulary, there's two options. As you all know, there's the Harvard Extension School, and the Harvard Extension School offers opportunities for learning both non-credit and credit. We offer bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and many other enrichment opportunities, including certificates. At the same time, we understand that career-focused professionals might have need for short-term non-credential-based learning, and therefore we've stood up the Harvard Professional Development Programs. And those are a terrific opportunity if career workers are looking for like a two-day negotiation skills training or something extremely focused and extremely short term. Those are available both online and in the classroom. And finally, for those learners who are approaching semi-retirement, retirement, or even post-retirement, we have the Harvard Institute for Learning and Retirement. Uh, this is something that um, has been it's a very special and unique learning model, and we hope to expand that uh, this year and over time as we, as we grow that. So I hope, hopefully this illustrates for you that there are opportunities here for everybody. And we really believe there is a DCE thread of continuity that carries through all of these programs and services. So as Dean and Steward of DCE, I see my role as facilitating learning to diverse individuals who come to Harvard for a meaningful educational experience, but one that will absolutely vary from person to person. We're so lucky to have a team at DCE that knows how to pivot quickly to different delivery methods, as we've been able to pivot to fully remote learning for both spring, summer, and fall terms. We'll continue to innovate, and our commitment is that we'll work on enhancing these experiences for learners across the globe. Continuous improvement is something that we've valued for a long time, and we will continue to do so. I truly encourage you to embrace the current, the coming year as a learning opportunity, and one that might not be perfect, but one that will energize and inspire new understandings. 
I look forward to hearing about your success and insights as that evolves. In closing, I'd just like to share the wise words of Larry Bacow, president of Harvard, and his note to the University of Community, in the university community on September 2nd. As I read these words, they touched me, and I wanted to share them with you because I think they're wise and I think they're great for our time. He says, what we will do will be important, but how we will do it will matter even more. When we get it right, we'll celebrate. When we get it wrong, we'll commiserate and try again. The truth is that none of us knows what lies ahead, but we face this uncertainty together. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and attention and, and interest in, uh, in DCE. I'd like to turn it back over to Jill because I understand that uh, she has some questions from all of you, but I ask, given that I've only arrived in July, I ask for your grace if I may not have the answers to everything, but we will, uh, we will do our best today. Jill? Yes, thank you, Nancy. Uh, we received dozens and dozens of questions from you all from all over the world. So we are doing our best to answer as many as we can today. We will likely not get to all of them. Um, there may be questions that arise in chat uh, that may be duplicated by what we have here. So we will do our best. Uh, so for the first question, Nancy, a uh, course taker in Colorado asks, will Harvard Extension School continue requiring on-campus study for degree completion? So the simple answer to that is yes, we will, because we believe the on-campus study is really critical and an integral part of the Harvard Extension experience. So those, those on-campus experiences may evolve over time. We continually look at them and revisit them to make sure that they're adding value to your experience. But absolutely, we feel that that's a core component of the work that we do. A related question uh, given to us by an ALM management degree candidate right here in Massachusetts. Given COVID-19 and the fact that all classes are online, why don't all classes taken at this time count as on campus? I guess the easiest way to describe the answer to that is we really view some of the classes that we offer and those certainly that contribute towards the residency are those that have an active learning component. And that's not every class that we offer at this time, but the active learning component uh, really provides high quality academic experience while offering students the engagement with faculty and peers that's so critical to the residency. So while we'd like to include every class, we just really felt that those that had a more active learning model were more important in that and really meets the spirit of the on-campus requirement for, for degree-based learning. Great. A graduate certificate holder in Florida asks, do you envision Harvard Extension School offering a PhD or other doctoral program in the future? And that's a great question and one that, that we get all the time. And unfortunately, the answer is no. And the reason it's no is that Doctoral study requires a, a deep bench of faculty and deep specializations in each of the academic areas. And that is not really our mission as we serve the adult learner market. We've really tried to focus on access and bachelor's and master's degree. And pivoting to a PhD model would not be something that would, that would meet our current model. So as much as you might want that, I don't think you'll be seeing it for us anytime in the future. Okay, great. Well, several alumni have pursued multiple masters, so there's that track as well. <laughs> Absolutely, and Jill, if I can make a point to that, you know, one of the evolving models that we see in higher ed right now, and, and in fact, some of you may, may have um, be participating in this, is this concept of stackable credential. And it's really driving your own educational experience, which might consist of multiple master's degrees, certificate programs, short period, short time frames, to really create your own agile career experience. So we encourage you to continue to explore that. Uh, we have certainly have plenty of offerings now. We'll be expanding them in the future to be able to really craft what your experience is. Uh, let's see, a business communications graduate certificate holder asks, could you explain why Harvard Extension School changed its admission requirement that a high school diploma or its equivalent must have been earned at least five years prior to enrolling in an ALB degree applicable course? Sure, thank you. That's, that's, that's also a good question that uh, even in my short time here that we, we get quite a bit. And the answer is um, 
as some of you may know, the Harvard Extension School is governed by other bodies around Harvard, including the Provost Office, who really maintains academic quality. One of the things that they have asked us to do is change the admission eligibility requirements for five years post high school. And that is because we are really equipped as a college to serve adult learners. And a lot of the things that go along with an undergraduate degree, specifically those who are younger, including a residential housing option, activities, and the support that younger learners might, might need, we are not fully equipped to offer that. And what we really wanted to do was focus our attention on that older adult learning audience. And we feel this admission requirements really lets us focus on the people who have a little bit more life experience and are prepared to be successful students with us. Um, a student in California asks, my lifelong dream has been to attend Harvard and the extension school gives me that opportunity, but financially it's impossible. Are there financial assistance options? So we do have financial assistance op options, um, mostly for students in the United States. And what I would encourage you to do is visit um, on our website, visit our financial services webpage, which will de detail all of the options that are eligible to you. Oftentimes that answer is an individual one based on your background and where you're from. So more information is on the website. And if that is not sufficient, then our team is happy to answer that in more detail given your current situation. That's great, thank you. And I also just wanna mention that there are scholarships available for degree candidates and we are always welcoming contributions that add to that fund. So if you'd like to pursue a gift uh, to a scholarship fund, please contact me or simply write back to the uh, email that invited you to this event and I'd be happy to provide resources. You can also find it on the Alumni Association's website. Okay. And an ALM degree candidate in Texas asks, Degree programs require a certain number of Harvard instructors, but they can be rather difficult to find at times. Mm -hmm. So where are the classes? Is that, is that the question? I suppose. <laughs> so this fall, there's over 650, I believe, courses that are taught by Harvard instructors. So uh, they are there. We monitor that very carefully. And um, oftentimes, if there are not enough classes, then we open more sections of a class to be able to accommodate that. So if you are having any trouble finding any of those classes, we really urge you to reach out to your academic advisor who can help locate some of those classes. This question I'm sure is on the mind of most people on this, uh, this event today. Dear Dean Coleman, will you be advocating for removing in extension studies from the Harvard Extension School diploma during your term? That's a question I've never heard before. No, kidding, kidding on that. <laughs> That's probably the most, uh, the most frequent question that we have, that we hear. And um, I, on behalf of the Harvard Extension School, I will say that we are very aware that the um, nomenclature in extension studies does not accurately reflect the student's course of study. But as I mentioned before, there are other bodies, other bodies in Harvard's governing body that really oversee that and um, we've had the conversation and um, and you know the answer so so far has not been positive for us um, it's not to say that we won't somehow approach it again but what i would urge you to do in thinking through the, the degree is focus less on the name of the degree and focus more on what it means and the fact that it just offers this extraordinary value and the personal and professional connections and enrichment that you have received as part of it um, I think that um, especially part-time adult degrees have just, just continued to grow in stature and acceptability across our country and in fact across the globe. So talking about some of the work that you have been able to do in our degree programs, regardless of their name, adds a tremendous amount of value and certainly adds a lot of credibility for you as well. I would just like to add, uh, from a personal perspective, I think, you know, we all agree we would like our diploma to be a bit more reflective of what we studied. However, you know, from my own experience and other alumni that, you know, that I have uh, met and have shared their story, I think you'll find, you know, at the end of it, if you're still a student now, I think you'll find in the end that the degree really transforms the way that you think, the way that you see the world, the way that you write. Um, and I think that's a fundamental transformation that you can make clear to an employer uh, that came from Harvard. So 
For me, I've always uh, positioned my degree as I studied at Harvard while working full time. And that's what extension meant. It was extending a full time program to me um, as a part time learner and gave me that accessibility. And I did not need to leave my career. So for me, Harvard has shined like a diamond on my resume. And I believe it will for you as well. But we will not stop working uh, towards change. Uh, but in the in the meantime, leverage it for every bit that it is. That's a great point, Jill. And, and I'll just add to that, too, that it, it's the thing that we talked about today. It's the community, right? I mean, you, regardless of what your degree says, you are part of a global community of Harvard learners and leaders. And that in and of itself can open doors and um, and really help you in any way. So feel free to reach out to other Harvard alums. Harvard offices, our career services, if there's any other way that we can help you and help advance your career, that's what we're here for. We're here to support you and um, help you help you move forward in the way that you would like to. Yes, I would also add, take advantage of the opportunity uh, to stay in touch with the faculty that have influenced your time here. Use them as recommendations. Uh, stay in touch with classmates. Join networking activities. Uh, take every opportunity that you can, whether you're at Harvard or it's after Harvard because there is such an array of resources available to you that are wonderful when you're a student, but they get better when you graduate. So hang tight. <laughs> okay, here's another question uh, from a CSS earner uh, in the, from the class of 97 from New York City. My job was eliminated, but I have great skills and I was wondering how our extension school degree might be best used in networking. So I think that's a terrific segue to the question that we really just answered, and that's um, use the extension and the Harvard community as, um, as one in which you can network uh, very solidly. I also strongly advise and advocate that you um, use our career advancement office, our career services office. I know uh, Jill and her team have set up any number of webinars and special events for folks who are either looking for a job, want to get a new job, want to use their credentials in a more meaningful way. So please stay engaged with us because we're always learning and looking for opportunities for ways that we can support you. So if you have suggestions on things that we're not doing but could, again, please let us know and we'll figure out how we can support you in that. And I would add to that, if you are an alum, uh, please create your Harvard Alumni Directory profile. That is sort of the, the heart of your post-Harvard experience. That is where you will easily find Harvard alumni all over the world working at any company of your desire in your city or elsewhere. Uh, very searchable and Harvard is a family and people will be there willing to help you. There is also a wonderful uh, program through the Office of Career Services called Crimson Careers where alumni are posting jobs where they want to hire you. They want to hire Harvard graduates. Utilize that system and share jobs. If you have them available at your company, add them there. Uh, it's a wonderful resource. And First Hand Advisors is an alumni mentorship program that I am really excited about uh, that we have just launched to alumni only in August. So alumni are signing up and populating that system and that will allow alumni and students to connect in a very easy way where alumni can help you find job opportunities, have a mock interview, review your resume, or have a longer uh, career chat. So that's a wonderful system that students will hear more about later this fall. And like I said before, we have limitless opportunities uh, for events in the, in the pandemic times. We have pivoted to virtual events that have been fantastic, and each of them includes networking. So you will leave with tangible relationships that have proven beneficial for our attendees. So please do stay connected, like Nancy says. Okay, here's another. Uh, a graduate certificate holder in New Jersey asks, can we have more career services for Harvard Extension graduate certificate holders? So absolutely. And for those who, who are not aware of what we already have, you are absolutely uh, welcome to use uh, some of the webinars and avail yourself of some of the resources that currently exist in our career services office. Um, you can participate in some of the activities that we just mentioned Jill's team has set up and we welcome you to do so. Um, I'll also add to, as given this theme of, of questions that's coming up, um, one of the things is if, if any of you have are hiring people or know of opportunities, please feel free to share them with your fellow graduates, please feel free to share them with us because we'll make the career resource available uh, office avail 
aware of these opportunities and hopefully we'll be able to get some networking and so create some opportunities from alum to alum. Absolutely. And, you know, to that point, certificate earners are a member of our alumni association at Harvard Extension School. You are an associate member. You can attend any of our events. You can help us run chapters in your city. You can volunteer in numerous other ways, and it's a wonderful resource. Um, great, great, great. Okay, so uh, we're pivoting just a touch. Um, and HILR, which is the Harvard Institute for Learning and Retirement, a member from Massachusetts asks, can you please say a few words about where Harvard Learning and Retirement is in your current list of priorities and where you see the program in five years? Sure, again, a great question. I had a fantastic event with the HILR community the other day over Zoom. And um, if you think back to the graphic I showed a little bit earlier, we truly view this, the DCE universe as an ecosystem. And that last piece, the Harvard Institute for Learning and, Re and Retirement, for th those of you who are not familiar with it, it is a really innovative peer, peer learning model that um, prior to this semester has really been focused on in-person learning, but because of COVID-19 has had to pivot to remote learning. We think that's a tremendous opportunity to expand the HILR community, to keep what's intact because it's a very special community. Um, these folks are also very, very tight um, in, the, in the DCE universe. But we also see opportunities to potentially expand the learning and retirement to other folks who can't necessarily come to Cambridge because either it's hard for them to travel or potentially they live outside of the geographic area. So we're currently looking for opportunities. We're gonna see how this semester goes with the remote learning. And um, you'll, you can expect to hear from us later about how we can integrate more broadly in the community and offer more opportunities. But I think especially as our population ages, this is just a tremendous opportunity to keep learning and keep learning throughout the lifetime. So uh, look to see some expansion of HLR programs over time. Great. A question from a graduate certificate earner in Florida. Do you plan to continue the Dean's Community Building Challenge? Absolutely. And, and I, to my knowledge, again, I'm fairly new, but that's been happening every couple of years. So uh, in speaking with our Dean of Students office this week, there is a plan, I believe, to offer it beginning in the fall of 2021. So look for more details on that coming when it's closer to that time. Great. And I just want to mention previous uh, winners of that challenge include uh, the creation of Harvard Extension School's convocation event and uh, the Global Ambassador Program. So while we've had to postpone the convocation event this year due to COVID-19, we will hold that event again next year. And I hope uh, some of you have been able to experience that. It's the beginning of your journey and a welcome to your degree program and a hearty congratulations. So that is coming. And I see that there's some global ambassadors joining us in chat. Thank you for the work that you Thank do. You. It's a wonderful idea. I also just wanted to mention while we're on the subject of events, uh, there was a, also a, a note in chat um, about being the graduate certificate earner and finishing that. And um, we are planning a celebration for graduate certificate earners that again had to be postponed, but look for that in the future. Okay, and one last question from an ALM from the class of 2012 in Barcelona, Spain. Do you plan on visiting Harvard Extension School community members once the pandemic is over? Oh, without question. Um, first of all, my, my bag is always packed. I'm, I'm ready to go at a moment's notice and Jill has already informed me that she is going to keep my schedule pretty busy. But you know, sin sincerely, I want to come out to the community and I want to meet you face to face. It's terrific that we can do events like these and um, it's great just that, that you all showed up today to get to know a little bit about us. But I think in terms of um, deep relationships with alums, I'd love to meet you face to face. Um, and just hear about your concerns and, and speak to you one on one. So as soon as it's safe to travel again, we'll absolutely uh, be doing a doing a tour with Jill, whatever you whatever you call it. So if you're interested in having <laughs> come to your city, please reach out to Jill and uh, and speak to her about that. And I truly do um, I truly do look forward to meeting you in person and uh, in a more conducive to conversation type of setting. <laughs> That's great. Yes, uh, we, you know, our series is called Harvard Extended. We have held 30 of them around the world, uh, you know, in the continental United States, 
Canada, uh, all over Europe, as well as Southeast Asia. So we are making our way. We have many more stops, as you can imagine. So hang tight. Um, there have been some other questions on chat just related to events that I can speak to. Uh, commencement was another um, in-person event that we unfortunately had to postpone. There was a virtual commencement held that I hope you enjoyed. Um, it's, you know, by no means the same as being on campus and Harvard is committed and we are committed to holding a graduation ceremony, both for the classes of 2020 and 2021, as soon as it is safe to do that. We still don't have guidance on when exactly that may be, uh, potentially in the spring, but again, we're waiting on um, Harvard's larger guidance on that. Um, Let's see, and there was a question about how to become a global ambassador that I can immediately answer. The Dean of Students Office um, opens up applications for that uh, at least once a year. So feel free to reach out to the Dean of Students Office directly if you're interested in becoming a global ambassador and they can help you. And that is the end of our uh, pre-submitted questions. I hope uh, we've been able to address most of them. Um, I've been monitoring chat here and there uh, to try to cover anything that wasn't. Uh, now, I can't thank you enough for joining, uh, for your continued engagement, uh, for being the number three most engaged community at Harvard University wide, which is just amazing. Uh, thank you for the investment of your time and your attention and uh, for the future. Please let us know if there's anything that you need, if there's anything we can do, anything we can do better, anything that we're doing well and should do more of, or any ideas that you have because we want them and we thank you for it. And always feel free to reach out to us at the Office of Advancement. You can find our contact information right on uh, the main website for the Division of Continuing Ed or email right back to that email that sent you this invitation. And Nancy, with that, uh, do you have any final thoughts or last words you'd like to share? I do, Jill. I, I just, again, thank you all for taking the time this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it happens to be in your world to, to join us. It, it's, it's truly heartwarming, the welcome that I have received from the community. And I have to say my first two months have been nothing short of fantastic. I, I'm so happy. I see there's so much opportunity at DC. First of all, DC is an amazing place to begin with. And I think there's just so much opportunity um, facing us in, in, in the future as online learning continues to expand, as our innovation team comes up, continues to come up with some amazing things, as we work on streamlining and getting better and better over time. I, as I mentioned, have met a lot of staff. I have talked to a few students and a few alums, but I look forward to meeting more of you both you know, on, on in, your, in your home turf when we're able to travel. But other than that, we will be doing some small student, um, student groups. So look for invitations to that uh, sometime in the future, late fall, early spring. And I truly, truly want to be your dean. So please do let me know, let the team know how I can support you. We are so aware of the issues with names and, and everything else that you brought up today. Um, it, has, it is not forgotten. It's something that's very much on our radar screen and we will let you know if we're close or how we're working on things. So thank you again. I truly, truly am so thrilled to be part of this community and I look forward to working with all of you. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, everyone. Stay healthy and stay safe. Take care.